Okay, it's after five o'clock, so I'll call our regular meeting of the Harper City Council to order at this time. Have a word of prayer. Father, again, we come to you with a thankful heart that uh, we live in such a free country, Father, that we can conduct our government business without any fears. We just ask for your guidance, Father, just to help us make the right decisions that would benefit the people of Hartford, that would help us progress and grow and Father, just uh, may everything we do and say honor you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 All right, uh, visitors. Do you have any visitors tonight? Huh? <laughs> you got anything for us? You won the lottery, won't know what part of it. <laughs> okay. All righty. <laughs> okay, uh, let's take a look at the minutes of our last meeting. And actually, we have two meetings there that we need to look over. We'll have to say that uh, since our last meeting when we approved the black topping at Memorial Gardens, if you've not been up there, drive up there. It really looks nice. I couldn't drive on it. I wanted to drive back on it, but they still had the ropes up. To, I guess it was still curing, but uh, if you have the opportunity, it really looks nice. So I must have been up there before we black topped because it didn't look like no, you need You need to go up there now. I, mean, yeah. I, I drove up there last night. It really looks nice. Yeah, I'm driving the blacktop machine back down the Union Street. Mm -hmm. That's where he probably been. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did a little patching on some other roads, but yeah, yeah it, it does. He, like George said, he kind of outdid himself, didn't he? I make a motion that uh, we accept the minutes of both meetings as presented. Okay. Is, um, is there a second to that? I'll second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? On the last meeting? There, I'm sorry. Any more discussion? <laughs> I misread something. <laughs> if not, we'll vote. All in favor, accepting those minutes as they've been presented. Uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion carries. Go opposition. All right. Miss City Attorney. I have a few things. Okay. Uh, start real quickly with. Uh, George and I had an opportunity to meet with the Code Enforcement Board on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, went over the new ordinances with uh, two of those board members. One of them had a emer family emergency she couldn't attend. But um, they're eager to get started and, and have their meetings. Our Code Enforcement Officer did show up, kind of went over his role, and uh, I believe that they kind of met together as well to figure out a game plan on how to move forward with some of these uh, issues that we've repeatedly had complaints on in the city. Um, so I think everything's in good to start moving a little bit more on that. Uh, one of the processes that we've always had is what to do when complaints come in from citizens and everything. I know a lot of council members, I think Sid contacted me in the past with those. Uh, probably the best thing is to get in touch with Nathan directly mm -hmm. if there is a complaint. Um, if nothing else, they can call up the city hall and one of the clerks can keep something in the notebook for the code enforcement officer when he comes in. He can help, he can have those to reference and uh, he can follow up on those particular complaints. But um, he said anybody's welcome to have his phone and leave a message for him and if he, if he needs to follow up on anything, then they're welcome to. Um, but when George and I were going over that, since you did up, uh, since you did pass the new ordinances for for the code enforcement board, reestablishing how that board is going to operate, we probably do need to go ahead and appoint the code enforcement board members. Right. And that can be done by municipal order. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, did you all want to do that now? They have to approve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but then I'd like to appoint uh, Flora Norsworthy for a one-year term. Uh, Janet Coulter for a two-year term, and Debbie Phelps for a three-year term. Who was the other person besides Flora and Debbie? Uh, Janet Coulter. 
I don't think I know her. She's a teacher out at Wayland. Jan Darty. Uh, and the terms were they staggered like two, three, and four? Is that what it was? It's one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Yeah. Okay. Do you need a? I mean, you've talked to all three of them. They're willing to serve. Oh yeah. The only concern I have is I, I'm great with all three of them. I don't know one of them, but if you're they're willing to serve, that's ninety percent of the battle. Is that we do have properties in this community that are blighted and that need to have mm -hmm. at least uh, you, you can cite them, but if we don't have a board. There's no action to take place. I think we owe it to the residents of City Hartford to make sure we get this done. So, uh, you that need was, our approval. And that was one of the things too that was discussed that day is that if nothing else, having that board willing to meet and have that, because uh, you have to issue those final orders before the city can go and abate anything. So right now, our code enforcement officer, if he issues a citation, he's it's kind of without any teeth. He, he has no. Are these tacked onto our county taxes, or is that a separate? Is that a separate? Uh, it's, a, it's a civil separate. offense. It's a separate citation issue. Does does it require to go through the district court right now? Not because we have a board. Okay. The board they can orders. eventually go to the district court if they fail to pay appeal, the appeal the board's okay. decision. But do you need a, do you need a uh, motion to approve? I so move. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, one of the other things I had is on the on the agenda. I'll leave that, and then I'll recognize that Nancy's here. Nancy and I have talked a little bit on some different matters regarding planning and zoning. Do you want her to go ahead and discuss that now? Or? Sure. Okay. Well, um, her and I have talked as well as A.B. Conway. Um, the city of Beaverdam, uh, A.B. contacted me, and they would like to have the ordinance gone over. I know we've talked before with the city of would like to have the ordinance gone over. And um, right now, I've, I've uh, looked through the ordinance and said that, that the two main things to be changed right now are the B3, that's business district, usually running up down 231. What you have downtown here should not be a B3, it should be a B1. Um, you know, they're having some problems because they're, they're just not zoned correctly. And I know you wanted to rezone quite a bit of things. It's going to, that's going to be expensive to do all of that because I think probably we need to go through the whole ordinance. Right now, it's a B3 in signs. That need to be done, quick, you know, as soon as we get through it. And I've pulled some sign ordinances from other counties and I'm studying them now. But it's pretty, uh, I, I think it's pretty difficult. And I wouldn't be sure that I could do it, so I need some help. And I know that... Uh, the two city attorneys have been are willing to help me. And Nancy and I have talked. We have a great resource at Grad that they've had people dedicated to doing nothing but planning and zoning. Um, and as often as things change and whatnot, I think we'd be foolish not to take advantage of some of their ideas and input. But they probably do come at an expense for sure. Um, and I know in the past we've asked them to kind of give us an estimate on what it would cost and how much. Uh, how much. Well, uh, whenever we have done the uh, uh, different things like that, I went and got an estimate from them, brought it back, had everybody look at it um, for different things. They will give me the best they can. The last thing we did was an update on the comprehensive plan, and they went through because that we had a, a census taken previously, and they needed to be incorporated. Um, then we had some businesses open that needed to be incorporated. And then our well, uh, maps at all change needed to be incorporated. So uh, that was $3,500. To do everything with the new ordinance and whatnot, I would estimate probably high end around 5000 For each municipality? I, no, because it would be one ordinance that each city would then pass. I don't think it's unreasonable considering that we're talking about changing the, the view of the city of Hartford, uh, ask, getting some out good I'm going to say a solid estimate of what it's going to cost in going to the Economic Development Committee and ask them would they fund half of that to, uh, to have that done. I mean, I think it's, it's in the best interest of the city and the future growth of the city. I mean, for example, I have a friend of mine who owns some property in, uh, close to where we are that's for, uh, for, for uh, just single dwelling. They'd like to put a duplex up, but the way it's zoned, they can't do it. So I think that we need to go back and evaluate the entire city and ask for all this to be done and and um, if we can get a best guess estimate uh, what I'd like to do is see if we can ask the EDC can we uh, let's say that I'm, I'm making up a number let's say it's $10,000 five for city of Hartford and five for city of Beaverdam 
maybe the EDC can help pay for that, our city, uh, the city of Hartford's portion of it. Well, first thing that I need both cities to do because I'll talk to you again uh, is to have you say what exactly you want done before I can go over there and tell them exactly what I need because your uh, comprehensive plan is time I think next year it has to be redone so because that's every five years and I do think if we're willing to jump in especially if we're going to hire someone like grad to come and help we need to do the whole thing the best we can yeah. so that's that's why I said I need the cities to tell me exactly what they want so that I can go over and present it. Out of ignorance on my behalf, does somebody, do we have to do it or can somebody, can, will somebody survey the city and look and say, you know what, this probably needs to be a B1, this needs to be an R1, this needs to be an R2, I mean, or do we have to do that? I think whenever the ordinance was originally uh, opened, again, after it was in the 80s and it closed and came back in the 91, uh, I think that that was done by some of you hard person with Mr. White. But I'm afraid what <coughs> happened was is, is they took what was there and made it that. You have, you have I think there's a, up and down to I, I think there's a difference between he's a business and she's a house and she, he's a duplex and they just zone it whatever's sitting there then going back and saying, you know what, this lends itself to where it, it, it might need to be an R2 or an R1 or, a, you know, okay, let's just say Arn Mountain. Out in the guts of Arn Mountain. Not where I live, but out there. That doesn't need to be anything but an R1, probably. But in certain areas in town, it might need to be an R2 to where you can have a multi-dwelling duplex. Some places need to be an R3. I don't know that we're astute enough to know that, but we want. I would rather spend the money to somebody that knows more about that to, to do that. Well, at the same time, then I have to have a research what is spot zoning, everything. I mean, you're going from the bottom up if we do it this way. But I don't think there's any other way to do it. Right. Nancy and I have looked, and there's bits and pieces of the ordinance that have been piecemealed together over the years. Manufactured homes and stuff like that's been updated. But there's other pieces of it that are just ancient, <laughs> really. Well, your business districts, you know, uh, from now to 31 in the way that they should be, are not correct. Uh, so that's I think we had a problem the last month or so, which we're going to have again. And Hartford, Hartford is Hartford the only one with a central so business district? Tara, is Hartford the only one with a central business district? Yes. Be Downtown, right Downtown Hartford is your only central business district in the county. That's what I thought. Your downtown areas are totally different than what they are listed. So, you know, uh, Mr. White had told me when I asked him on the zonings and stuff, he said, well, I think what they did is they looked around and they got the majority of what was there and they put it down. And he said they, they busted up uh, blocks, have half a block this and half a block that. And he said, that should have never been done. Yeah. yeah. I said, well, I, now I realize what he was saying. It should never have been done, which won't suit a lot of people when you take all block areas and stuff. But I think it needs to be done. And I will point out to the council as well that if we are to rezone portions of the city, and let's say something is R1 now and you rezone it to an R2 or R3, that doesn't necessarily change how the nature of your particular home or structure is seen. You're grandfathered in so long as it remains that type of uh, you know, business residence whatsoever, it can stay that way even if you transfer ownership until it ceases to act in that capacity. Then it would be stuck with a new zoning classification. Do we? Uh, so, so for instance, where I just take me for instance, I got a lot on one side, a vacant lot on the other side that I own both, but a relative owns another vacant lot. And I, from what I understand, when I went to talk about purchasing from her, it was zoned where she. It wasn't big enough for her to put like a duplex or something. But if it gets rezoned to where it can be, it could potentially. You could uh, there's a difference. Have, there's a difference on that. That's a setback on your lot lines and how far apart. Your, that's not necessarily yeah. much as a zoning issue. Is a setback as far as 50, 25, 25, and your lot may not be big enough. You may be zoned to put a duplex on it, but the lot itself may not be big enough to set one on. So you've got two issues there. You got to look at. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just I was just thinking about people, you know, that somebody. But your vacant lot on your one side, something. the vacant lot on the one side next to the corner for you, that's going to be even harder for someone to come in because you you have a corner there, so your setback is going to be even greater with that. that you've got two edges there you got to deal with. So when you have a corner lot, you lose quite a bit. People don't realize that. You have to take from that corner. You've got to run twenty five foot one direction, twenty five foot the other in that direction, and, and meet in the middle, and you can't put anything there. 
So if you lost some of your lot, you know, and that's because of traffic. Well, when they out, people get their lot over here and they're backing out the traffic and you can't see them. So that's the reason for that. And you can't change that. You know, that's a state law, too. That's not just what, plan. So. What is Beaver Dam wanting? Are they wanting, are they wanting to do like what I just suggested, just look at the whole city, yes. let somebody else come in and say, this is probably what this needs to be and make a recommendation? Yeah, because they want, just like you all do, they want to use more of the property in a better way instead of being stagnant with what's sitting there and not being able to add on because you won't, you won't change your mind. Is this something that we can get an estimate from grad to say by the, this time next meeting that you're going to come back and say, you know what? What we're wanting is the moon, the sun, and the stars. It's going to cost fourteen thousand dollars. I mean, can you get us an idea for that by the next meeting? Well, I tell you what, I can do because then previously, whenever we had went around and looked around, and I looked at the maps and saw much of it needs to be redone um, for you to have usable properties. Well, I went to Brad, and then I met with the lady. I brought a lady over here, and you all uh, took her and showed her around. And uh, she said at that time, she said, "Get back in touch with me," and she said, "I will." work with you and I'll come to your meetings and you tell me exactly what we need and I'll go back and I'll talk to my supervisor and we'll see and at least get a good idea on it. So I can contact her again and she would come to meetings. She said, I'll do whatever. And we might even be able to put together like a conference call with her at some point to explain exactly what we're looking for. So maybe she can come back with a written proposal. Well, my, uh, one thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to see if some of the members, you, with AV or whatever, we could get together and get an idea of what I need to ask them for. Because you want it all done and you want everything asked for at the same time and get an amount. And because then if you throw other things in, then you're, you're just going on up. So I think that it needs to be a joint meeting of some type. Is that more than just a recommendation? We don't have to vote on anything, do we? I mean, I hate to say it, I almost like to start from ground zero. Let's schedule a time to call a grad together and, uh, and talk to her and explain what we're looking for and then see what recommendation she might have to do. Well, see, and, and, and doing with that, I'll also talk with another gentleman over there because at the same time, we're going to have to have the maps all redone, which they need it anyway. So, yeah, you're talking about from zero up and it'll be uh, everything. How many years has it been since it was initially done? 2000, I think, was the last time for Hartford. Yeah, I was going to say early 90s. I think it's time. <laughs> I think it's time. <laughs> um, uh, we also uh, worked with the problem with the trailers in Beaverdale where someone wanted to sell them on their lot where they had a pawn shop. Well, it's on B3 and it says trailer sales. So, we got through that because I bluffed them a little bit, and you did too, as far as getting them to make an agreement with us. I didn't really have any right, I don't think, to do that. But I asked them if they would, and they said, yeah, so, okay. That stopped them, and they can only put two on a lot at a time. That at least helped, because they're going to put them on a lot where they also sometimes sell everything else. Well, and now you all are maybe going to have that same problem here in Harper because it happened over there. And uh, I don't know how to get anything stopped about it I, unless i do that again to get him not to be able to put a whole bunch of them he's going to do the very same thing well it's going to still fall into our nuisance ordinances too and that's going to be a, a concern but that's that'll be part of the thing that i think we're going to look at for the entire reason yeah and right now you see you can't i don't know what you can do about it other than i'm going to if he goes in with what he said i'm going to go there and say you don't have any you don't have any room to do that mm -hmm. and be subject to the same step back though I have, I have to find yeah. out some way. Um, I'll tell you where it is, you know, where the car wash is here. And then there's a trailer park right behind it. Um, he, little Stevie has said he thinks he's just going to put two or three or four trailers back there and sell them off that lot. Well, that's just between that trailers back there and there. That is a business district. Where those uh, trailers are for rent back in there that he has, that is a business district also. So, again, we're falling into what happened in Beaverdale. And... Uh, you don't need that jumped up around here. We didn't need that jumped up anywhere, but it's going to happen if we can't do some changing. Well, let's get let's get with them and see if we can't get the council proposal by the next year and come back with an idea. So, probably we can do that, and maybe do you want to work on maybe getting a meeting together after I get her over here or something? Or Let, let's talk to her first on the phone and see what we you know tell her what we're looking at and try and get an idea on pricing, and then I think we can do a joint meeting maybe. Okay, there you go. All right, that's what I mean.
thank you all very much. Thank you. Figure out what all I need to do, right? <laughs> The only other thing, Mayor, that I have is I'll call attention. I think all of you have received a packet from Lisa about the Open Records, Open Meetings Act. Um, every year, Attorney General sends down a letter saying that every, all council members and all city officers and, and uh, officials have to be familiar with the Open Meetings, Open Records Act. On the very last page is a receipt showing that you've received your packet. Lisa does need you to fill that out and give it back to her. So. We've got a certain amount of time we have to send these back in, so. Let's see. He's got to get it. When I sent this job, I think I was supposed to. Mm -hmm. You already did it. I already did it. Oh. 20. <laughs> All right. That brings us in to uh, the financial reports. Uh, if you have any questions at all. 116 East Washington Street. I just didn't know. I did that first. I said that's that. <laughs> okay, I uh, need to be educated again okay. on some of the things, so bear with me as I go through some pages here. <laughs> as I as I thumb through some pages. Um, my uh, let's go to page uh, sanitation income statement, page one of two. Okay. Uh, and I'm looking at sanitation salaries and wages, and I'm just looking at the current period and the comparative period and it's up fifteen hundred dollars and I, I'm just is that because we hired somebody or or what I just don't know what 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 would be the Can difference yeah I see where he is where you start that. yeah comparative period is your 2017 year mm -hmm. um, that's just strictly whatever is keyed in. I can check into it, but whatever the payroll was written for, where they said they worked at sanitation. Um, I mean, I just it just kind of st stood out, so that's why I was kind of mm -hmm. asking why why the big difference. Um, and let's go over to water. Let's say water income statement, page two of three. And I'm going down to where it's uh, water maintenance and repairs. <laughs> Needless to say, there's a big whopping difference there. And then if you go on down to the chemicals, it's a big whopping difference. Okay. The chemicals is a timing thing of depending on when they purchased them. Okay. Assuming from year to year that we use the same amount of chemicals for the most part, there's not been a really big increase in price. It just depends on when that they need to order it. Okay. Your maintenance and, uh, what did you say, maintenance and repair? Yeah. Okay. Um, there was that pump on it. Mm -hmm. So that was actual repairs at the station? No, oh, we, have a, I mean. we have a pump. Okay. Uh, portable pump that pumps out the river okay. and goes up into. Uh, you want to tell them where that pump works? Anyway, periodically, um, is that the one that are behind? Yes. Yes, we had we had to send it off to be repaired. Okay. Okay. And then we send it off. We also got to. And then we have to rent one while they have it in the shop. Okay, it's like two hundred dollars a day or something like that for the one that we rent. But the repairs on that thing are just crazy. Yeah, they are. It's a what is it? Four inch pump. Yeah, it pump it pumps four inch holes. Okay, it, it is it's part a big of the, pump. And it is part of the project that will be completed down there once they get the divers in. Yeah. You know, 
right oh, now. Okay. So it should be something that's gone away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and let me say before I ask about the next question, I think our uh, put this our city employees, fire department, police department, water department. I commend all of them and, and what they do, especially manual labor and the things that they have to put up with. And having said that, I want to look at the fire department income statement again. Um, on page one or two, the materials and supplies. I just it just seems like every every month we're It just seems like there's a lot of stuff going out, and of course, needless to say, there's not a lot coming in. And, and, you know, it's just dues and stuff. Well, I'm, I'm more clear at you if you'll go to your counts payable report for the mm -hmm. fire department, you can actually see the vendors and a description of what actually was purchased yep. that makes up that number. Yep, yep, and I saw all that. And I have, the, have the mayor has been looking I at have, that this I have a well. question in that regard. Are they operating off of a purchase order system? And are they complying? We've we've had to remind them to use the PLs. Um, but here would be my argument: if an item is ordered without a PO, yeah, they do not follow the guidelines. I don't care what department it yeah. is; it should not be paid. It should be back to that department to be responsible for the payment. Uh, we now have a employed fire chief, do we not? Right. I'm sorry. I, I, mean, called, I called him into office. We've had a talk uh, yesterday or day before one. Okay. Uh, we just had an airing out of the way they're handling their purchases, things like that. Uh, I remind them about purchases over $2,500 that I had to bring before the council, things like that. Uh, they've had they purchased a skid for like fourteen thousand dollars. He goes in the back of the new pickup truck, and they said that was part of the agreement to purchase the truck and equipment. You know, it's it's already been agreed that they could spend that money for the skid that goes in the back of the truck. Is that a true statement? Yeah. Well, we when we agreed to buy the truck, uh, it was. The truck is forty some thousand dollars. By the time it gets equipped, it'd be up around seventy thousand dollars. And whenever we agreed, that, you know, that the eleven thousand that they get every year would go toward paying back occupational tax when we purchased back the truck. Uh, I think it was it was initially agreed that we would buy the truck and equip it, <coughs> lights, everything that it needed, you know. And it raised the bill up to is about seventy thousand. But okay, but I, okay, let's talk about that. Just a second. that's fine. Let's say we approve seventy-two thousand dollars for okay. truck and outfitting, and right. the truck was forty-eight thousand. Yeah. Okay. Well, that means that they got twenty-four thousand dollars left that they can spend to outfit that truck, right? So, okay. Yeah. So you 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 work your way, and you've already voted to approve seventy-two. You spend forty-eight on the truck. You got twenty-four more. That's fine. They can go ahead and buy it, but they have to have POs tied to that. Once that 72 gets hit, we're done. That's what we've, that's what we've talked about. Uh, they just felt like that it was already okay. They could just go out here and spend the money. We said, no, we still have to go ahead and use purchase orders for everything. Uh, everything over, was it $250 that we used purchase orders for? Everything? Purchase over 50 Okay. If it's over 250 it's mayor approved. Are, yeah. there, are, are there specific vendors that are routinely used through the yes. fire department? Yes, then do. I would, I would put them on notice. I would say suggest PO. the city send notice that any any expend, expenditures over a certain balance have to be on a uh, approved purchase order. That way, that the, was the discussion we yeah. had. We're, we're not, not just the fire department, but the vendors themselves. We're, so that they we're not going back on what our word was. We'll honor what our word is. All we're asking is any anything that is spent from a budgeting standpoint, even if we've already approved it. We need to know what's what's coming through, and that's fine. They can go ahead and buy it, but they've got to come through this office to get a purchase order. Yeah. 
It's not like we're trying to hold our hands. We're just trying to have accountability and transparency of where the money's going and how it's being spent. Well, if they use, or if they're using consistent vendors, I mean, you could do a blanket PO for you know a certain amount for a period, and that way they don't have to come in here every single time they get something from them that's already approved for yeah. you know for a certain amount. I mean, we do it all the time with job security. They use Finley a lot, and uh, like for the Pierce truck, Finley is the only uh, only per only company in Kentucky that services Finley, uh, Pierce trucks, so they have to use them. They uh, when they bought the skid, they they uh, priced three other companies, and Finley turned out to be the cheapest on that. You know, so. Um, they do due diligence in searching out the best price. The they just haven't learned uh, to use the purchase order process, you know, just for routine purchases. Well, the, the main thing, I, I mean, I, if we promised them so much money to use it, for, I, I, like Tony, I agreed I, to stand by that. I just want them, and not just them, but all of our city employees that are that are in charge of spending they need to be start learning to be frugal with the city's money because guess what I mean times are lean right now yeah. and just because they got 25 bucks twenty five thousand dollars left over that don't mean just go out and blow it or right. just right. save it for a rainy day that if we have to comment you know. amazing, it Danny, it was, yeah. just because yeah. you got money left in your budget doesn't mean we've got money in the bank to cover yeah. it so and actually, the rest of the departments was uh, water or distribution or maintenance do an excellent job yeah. of using POs. They they watch what they purchase. Uh, we've actually cut down, I think, on our purchasing and just do whatever is the basic that we have to. So there's, and you guys know, I, I'm not familiar with the way that the PO process works here, but. Uh, why, why do we not have a centralized purchasing? Like, I don't know if there's someone who could do that, but it might be something to look at rather than each, you know, entity doing its own ordering all the time and then you've got these issues. Well, like maintenance doesn't know what water needs, you know, or right. distribution but buys clams that maintenance may not know anything about, you know, or, place first uh, you know it's just right I understand that but that's if you have a centralized purchasing then that one person knows what's in the budget and what's in the account and you know can yeah. do the ordering that way rather than people just ordering at will based on their budget Something to think about. and I've just I've got just two more uh, check register page one of two do we have a inmate get hurt doing working on the garbage? Uh, yeah, something? that was about a month, six weeks ago. Uh, which one are you looking at? Uh, inmate quick care garbage, 129 oh, yes. bucks. Okay. And we are responsible for them complete. That's what I was concerned about. It wasn't about. anything serious. He had to go to help. Had to go to the quick care, and as soon as he was treated. Oh. I can't remember exactly what they did to him. It was more just spray on some antiseptic they or something like that. Probably give him a tetanus shot. Maybe a tetanus okay. shot. Okay. But, but after that, he went right back over here. <laughs> we don't use him anymore, so. Okay. And last one. Uh, page two of six on the voucher it says golf course booster pump repair. Did we borrow theirs? Okay. No, there is a, I'm sorry, we have certain names for booster pumps yeah. based on lo location. Yeah. IGA means the booster pump at IGA. The golf course is the booster pump that's at the golf course. As in the county golf course? We run water lines. We run water lines. We, yeah, we, we provide water lines. We have water lines. Water lines. Water lines. Water water lines. We go all the way to the golf town. Okay. Oh, one last one. I'm sorry. One of six. Installed engine and parts, $3,500. What was the engine for? Uh, the water plant had a pickup truck that blew an engine on 
uh, going to Madisonville. Well, our department could have bought them one for twenty-five thousand. Oh, it's the water. <laughs> and the meeting, so we got a rebuilt engine and installed for the thirty-five hundred. Okay. So we've got more mileage out of this truck. <laughs> this probably has don't tell me hundred thousand miles on it. Uh, it was cheaper than buying a new truck. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions about the bank statements? You did your due diligence. Yeah. Trying to see where the money goes. That's right. That's why you're paying the big bucks. That's right. That's right. Make a motion we accept it. A second. All right. Any more discussion regarding bank balances? Bank statements. All in favor of accepting the report? Thank you. Motion carries. Brings us to uh, old business. Uh, first item that we have there is second reading of our water and sewer rates. Uh, we'll entertain somebody reading it, then we'll have a discussion regarding it, and then take a vote on passing it. Everybody has a copy in your. Yeah. Anybody would like to read? City of Hartford Ordinance Number 2018-05, an ordinance of the City of Hartford, Kentucky, setting water and sewer rates for all water and sewer customers inside and outside Hartford city limits. Okay, is there a second to that? Be, okay, now let's have a discussion about the... Yeah. He gave the second reading. Who made the motion? You haven't had a vote on it yet. Oh. Well, he said a second. I'm just oh, well, he said a second. Okay, I need a motion to to adopt that. I'll make a motion. Okay, okay. there's your point. Right. Right. And she seconds it. Now discussion. Sorry. Thank you, Lisa. Well, I'm just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. The rest of us are half asleep. <laughs> That's why we pay her the big bucks. Okay. <laughs> Since the OC monitor has posted this uh, increase in water rates, there were several comments made on it. You know, I couldn't. I, I did not recognize any comment maybe with the exception of one or two that I knew that lived in the city of Hartford. I think a lot of people get confused between county and city and some people just want to complain. You know, do I want to raise water rates? No. I mean, I don't want my water bill going up 30, $30 $35 a month when I say water bill, the vehicle that gets delivered on, on that. But I don't want to continue losing $240,000 a year on, on a proprietary account, and nor can we raise rates high enough to keep from losing all of that. Um, you know, I had a conversation with some water employees the other day and the <coughs> things that we're going to have to work collectively to help get things under control. And I want to commend, as you said, those departments here who have worked hard to comply with the purchase order process, which helps keep us our thumb on the money that we're spending. Uh, but this, this is a journey, and we're going to have to stay at, at task. Um, like I said, I hate it. I think that we're, there's some things that we can do. I think that we have to diligently look and see someday can we sell water to Center Town? Can we sell water to Beaver Dam? Can we? Uh, I think we need to have discussions about uh, changing some ordinances or creating some ordinances that when you have uh, uh, duplexes, when you have uh, multi multiple fa family dwelling facilities being built, that each one has to have its own separate meter rather than one meter put in because that's significant discount on those type of things. Um, you know, it's to, my understanding is there are facilities in this community they may have eight or ten dwellings in the same building but only have one water meter. I mean... That might take 75 at one, only one or two meters. You know, I will say that it was slightly addressed under section 1A4. Section A what now? One A. Right there. I think that's a good start. To I'm not help. a. Uh huh. I said to help. Yeah, I'm not convinced that that is the final answer, and I'll use this as an example. Tara and I own some buildings in town. They had one gas meter. They had one electric meter. They do not not have that anymore. They have, for every unit has separate gas and separate water, uh, electric meters for each one of those. 
water wasn't so easy to do because when we're in downtown and we had the city sidewalk, <coughs> it would be it would have behooved us if we could have figured out a way to buff that up and have each one be metered. Um, and it would affect us in the future, but I do think that we have to consider that. We may not be able to go back and fix the 75 or the ones that are out there, but we sure can prevent it in the future, I think. I will also note for the record that the inside rates that are set by this ordinance, if it wasn't explicitly made clear at the last meeting, that is the county rate, as David had originally proposed, plus your 2%, to, to be clear for everyone. So when there's been some confusion over exactly how high and everything, it's the count it's essentially the county rates plus two percent. And you're not you're not going to be having another raise until your annual increase. So in other words, we're fourteen months away from another increase. Yeah. Okay. My understanding is and you were telling me the other day when, when you and I made a trip and my wife made a trip to Beaver Dam, that was cutoff day. Mm -hmm. Was that number higher than normal or, or more aggravating than normal? About forty. About forty this time. About forty. It was just about three percent of our population not a fun day not for Sarah <laughs> <laughs> I think she might have came this close to resign <laughs> no. uh, but um, and I, I'm gonna start on the 25th I'm gonna start sitting out front and confronting those people or answering to the people who come in and take it off the girls because they're just doing their job, you know, and you got people come in that they didn't pay their bill on the 10th. We gave them two more weeks to pay with the penalty, and they still didn't pay, and they come in, and they wonder why their, their water shut off, and they want it turned right back on right now. And it just, it calls me that people have that kind of bravado that they come in with that kind of attitude, um, you know, and I attempt to, I'm attempting to maintain my composure, but I will address it whenever some the next people come in. Would you say it's fair to say the city of Hartford is more lenient than Atmos and KU? Do I now? Would you think that the city of Hartford may be more lenient by giving them two weeks than Atmos or KU would? I would say probably so. I'm not sure what their cutoff is, but... Uh, On the subject of leniency, I'm going to... I think you all passed some policies regarding uh, collection on water and cut off fees and that was all some of those cut off fees and everything are actually in ordinance so that's law mm -hmm. so anything yeah. that's in there especially penalties with. and fees you have to comply and you can't discriminate oh those 40 how many have got turned back on how many 14 14 got turned back on 26 are still off mm -hmm. holy moly <laughs> okay some people just a lot of times they don't get paid until first of the month. That's pretty consistent. When, okay, is it pretty consistent the same ones over and over again? Most time it is, yes. While we're, while we're talking about these multi-unit, uh, uh, multi-units on the same meter, would you want to address and offer your idea about... And yeah. I've got some math on this. The way the city of Ibrahim does it is every place over there, it's got, uh, each place has a meter, okay? And they make more money off their sewer rates off because of that. And they also make a whole lot of money, more money off their water rates because after we sell so much water to them, they get a big discount. But if you put an individual meter in each one of them, nobody gets that big discount. The city makes a profit off of all that. Um, I had it within a year. We can pay for setting all the meters and pay for the employees putting the meters in just on the first year. Well, um, I, I just want to say really quickly that the city would not make a profit off of it. Well, no, we might make a revenue. But what I'm saying is <laughs> we, we're not making we, we, will, we will not be in the debt that we're in right now as far yeah. as with the, with the regional wastewater and stuff like that. Question, I'm just curious. What volumes of, uh, with everybody having a minimum? Okay. That's what, that's what we based everything on. Yeah, you got something maybe you could deliver to us at the next meeting when you take a look at that. When you're yeah. talking about 75 units. Well, you got 75 oh. units there, you got 30 some units down here, and then you've got 40 some units at uh, Montgomery Court Park. But let me, let me explain too that whenever, like regarding River Bend, their minimum bill they pay is 75 times the minimum 
of an individual yeah. residence. Which is oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Which is now why that is written in your yeah. knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But see, where they, where they get their saving is it doesn't take them long to get up to the higher bracket right. where they're paying less per thousand that a residence would exactly. never get to. So that's what we're losing our money. So if you had 75 individual residences, you'd still get the same base. You still have 75 minimums, but you wouldn't have as many getting up to where the so-called cheap money is. Well, then I'm of the opinion. Cheap water. Let's, 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 uh, can we look at it both ways? Can we say that there's 75 units and there's time, and there are each one's paying its base of 2,000, and we don't give. I mean, that's that that high volume should be based upon industrial use, not because I got 75 residential units. Can we can we word it? Can we fix an ordinance accordingly? Well, I don't know how you would. How how are you going to how are you going to monitor. actually monitor? Yeah, you don't have a meter, so how are you, how are you going to measure what? See, that's what the individual meters right. would take care of. That that's the you reason know. why they're doing that in the first place. <laughs> I can't arbitrarily assign you a usage. Well, we could, but we wouldn't want to. <laughs> I think that's what the city does to me. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but to be honest with you, you know, you was talking about me. You was talking about earlier about the meter deposits. I think if somebody doesn't stay here within a year, the beer deposit should stay at the city of Hartford. But they stay here after the year, we give their money back. Because you got everybody moving in, and they stay four or five months, and then we turn the water back off. That way people want to stay here. They, they don't get their beer deposit money back after a year. There's uh, a lot of places that do that. But I was talking to, that's why uh, uh, a lot of places do that. If they're not here for a year, they don't get their beer deposit back. <laughs> okay, you used to be that way. <laughs> Watch out, you're stepping on toes. Yeah, a couple. <laughs> uh, but we, we're digressing from our. That's something for us to, I think, uh, think about and to address in the future. Yeah, unfortunately, whether I agree with it or not, I, I think our water rates are where they need to be right now. And uh, these are other sidebar notes that we could discuss somewhere in the future. I, I do have one question, just because you, that information you've asked Jimmy to bring back to the council. Is it feasible to go out to somewhere like Riverbend Apartments and put a meter, even at the city's expense, how much, how much trouble is that going to be then to tie it into each individual unit? You couldn't do it. That would have to be actually all that we can do. Meter, right. To come to the meter, uh, which we could probably pay likings because we're not allowed to book uh, residents of uh, Bitcoin. But I mean, it would be somewhat invasive because you'd have to reroute things to eat, right? Well, there's already a two inch line running to each, uh, each duplex. Okay. So we could set the, uh, the meters off of that two inch line and then basically have river bins to hook them up to the, each, each one hooked up to the, uh, the water meter. Which actually would save a lot of money. I mean, we're you're talking about one hundred and thirty dollars, and and the labor's probably going to be what thirteen dollars an hour for a couple of guys putting them in. Uh, so it wouldn't take too long to pay it off. You know, and that's like I was talking to George about. And, you know, you guys might laugh, but uh, like a river bit, people moving in and out all the time there. Okay, it costs two hundred dollars basically for your meter deposit, if they don't stay there for a year, you keep that, that pays for your, that pays for the meter. The meters are paid off a lot quicker that way. It saves a lot of money for the city. I mean, there's a, there's, there's a lot of money to be made if, if, if we must have sat back and think about it. You talking $200 to $200. All right, you had $200 at Riverbend for 30, what, 75 people down there, and you got half of them that moves in and out in about three months with the money that, that you saved. Uh, she came up with a good idea a while ago about uh, uh, as far as the POs. The POs should actually go through your department heads before, and they should know basically how much money you have to spend. That's that's my opinion. She could, that was a pretty good idea a while ago. She said one guy do it, but each guy in each department should be able to know what how much money they can spend. Just like the other day, I come to ask George. 
we got a three thousand dollar plan for three hundred seventy five dollars last last week. Four of was going to they call us if we needed. We just had a, a water bus that day and used that same. So we saved a lot of money off the water plant. So it's a, it's a special water plant. It's, 20, it's 24 inches long by six inch round. And what we need to do is when we talk to Ford line when they have these special autos and they get ready to get rid of them, to give us a call and we can buy them for a big discount. I mean, you know, just small things like that saves money and it's up. Ends up being a big thing uh, at the end of the day. And like I would have had to call George and say, hey, can I get that plan? Make sure you had no money. You know, I, I could have looked at the, the fund and say we could have went ahead and got it and save time. And time is money. I mean, I think you bring up a valid point. There, there are opportunities in this city to, to become more efficient. I don't know that we're prepared to make some of those decisions tonight. But I think we we can look at some options. I mean, um, and we can even test it for a while, and if it doesn't work, then we'll go back. But um, I think we're going to have to look at a variety of options. Um, you know, I'm, I deal with the purchase order system every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we have different levels of approval. The CEO has the highest. Our CF, C, C, CEO has a high. CFO has an next high. C, you know, has an next one, and I have the next one. It's just the way it works. And then various people throughout the organization have different levels. Um, but I think it's something we can look at. But sometimes when you get a deal, you have to make sure everything's okay. I appreciate you thinking outside the box and trying to save some money. That's refreshing. Thank you. Well, we hit the home run on our plan. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. All right, we'll see you guys. Thank you. Hey, Jim. Uh, can you stay around for just a little bit? And we can. We can. I'll ask the mayor because I want your involvement on a couple of these. Okay. You have a motion on here? Yeah, I do. I'm waiting for discussion. <laughs> I'm down on the right uh, ordinance. Any more discussion? All right, we have a motion and second to adopt this ordinance 2018-05. All those in favor of lifted hand. Uh, thank you. Motion's carried. Ordinance is adopted. All right. Um, Mr. Mayor, are we allowed to discuss a couple of subjects under new business, so Mr. Yeah, we'll be fine. Go ahead. Uh, I had the opportunity the other day to uh, meet with uh, some distribution employees. Um, I think it was no secret I was a little frustrated at the last meeting when we learned that our engineers had a water line run down Highway 69 for more forward and dead headed the line, right? Um, and talking to Jimmy, uh, we could put a flush hydrant on the end of 231. Yeah, George and I talked about the same thing, actually the same thing you talked about. Okay. We could put a flush hydrant at the end on 231 next to Muddy Creek. Right. Which will not dump chlorinated water into Muddy Creek. No, because it's got dechlorination built uh, into it. That will help keep them moving that water on through uh, to where we, we can help make sure we've got good chlorine through our water system and we're not going to necessarily a dead head line. Uh, is that time, how does that work? Is that on a time sequence? Is yes. That, what's that based on? What we'll end up doing is uh, we'll do an experiment on it. We'll, we'll come up here in the morning time and we'll get all the chlorine out there. And then we'll take uh, chlorine readings like every every day, three times a day, and see when we get the drop in the, in the chlorine. And then what we'll do is that's the time we'll turn the uh, uh, the, the chlorine on. Okay. And what that does, it, it keeps the water moving through the, through our weak period of time. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I I think it's necessary to make sure our chlorine levels are high enough. I do think that whatever the cost of the labor and the hydrant is is, I think that ought to be fall back on our engineers from an errors and emissions responsibility because this would not be happening if it had not been for their mistake of making a dead end line. But uh, I think that it originally wasn't a mistake but done for a reason, correct? I haven't reviewed that, but I mean, I, I would assume that there was supposedly that stubbed out there for future development of that lot. That's what but, I was thinking. But we, were trying, but we were trying to get rid of dead end lines and we created one. 
Yeah, yeah I, I don't know because I wasn't here, but I, I don't know that that was the engineer versus what we what the city wanted at the time, like she said, for future development with that line going out there. So. I think ultimately we probably just need to call the engineers in I think, I mean, what was originally planned and what actually ended up happening. I mean, I think I think it's only fair that we do look at pushing the flush, the flush hydrants in. We don't have to make a decision to ask for the engineers to cover it until we are beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was a, it was a mistake on their behalf. We probably still have a little money left out of the contract uh, that we can use for those flush hydrants. I mean, I would like to make a motion that we install a flush hydrant out there at the end on 231 by Muddy Creek. Sure, what's, that co what's that cost, uh, Jimmy? Uh, I it's the same thing we've done out here on 1543, oh, uh, 1543 basically the same thing, uh, $3,700. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, discussion to that. Anybody have any comments? You so, mean you may go ahead and order that from tomorrow? Or? We, we have both. We have to. We have to. <laughs> Uh, do so we want to go ahead and put that in there not knowing whether we would be responsible to pay, pay for it or they would because it doesn't really matter we need it there anyway, we need right? there anyway regardless yeah. I mean I can call Steve and talk to him about yeah but if we need it there regardless then if it is if it is found to be their fault I guess they could reimburse the cost of that well, I think they, what they would think about fire protection with that eight inch line down through there, that's what, uh, what I would say. Oh yeah, that is what you said. I forgot what yeah. had been said, it but I knew there was something fire else. Fire protection. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily for providing services, fire protection, but... Yeah. So there was a purpose was behind, a purpose. yeah, how they did that. Which was counterproductive. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all in favor of fire protection, but the whole effort of doing this was to prevent dead end lines. I think too. there was an oversight too of what that was going to do to the city's water circulation system. So I think there's there's room to discuss it with the engineers because of that lack of foreseeability when it's obviously going to create some sort of issue if you don't have any circulating water at that end of that line. Because the point was we were trying to get rid of dead end lines. Right. Right. And we created one in the process. Right. So. More discussion? Okay, if you're in favor of installing the flush hydrant up with the hand. Okay, thank you. Motion carried. I also asked Jimmy, in that same discussion, we were looking at things. We've done a lot of work in the city of Hartford. And, and I, as a side note, I will have to say that I thought was a little hysterical about the comments I saw on OCT monitor in regard to raising water rates right? so that if they would install more lines and, and, and provide you know, delivery of water that might help. If anybody's been around the city of Hartford, they've seen a lot of water lines being installed. So I don't know what community they're living in or what box they crawled underneath them, but uh, I thought that was a little ironic. I do think there's some merit in having some discussion and looking at how our chlorine levels are, are, are throughout the city because of all this improvement that we've made uh, and make sure that we're meeting standards. So. Uh, um, I think it would behoove uh, maybe if we could get two or three of us to sit down with distribution and the water plant and look at some potential, uh, uh, you know, how, how some of these readings are coming out and see how effectively we are moving water through town now. I mean, it's doing our due diligence of what we try to accomplish. Yeah, I think it's going to take us some time to get to find the level. Now that we've created a different system, it's going to take right. us some time to find the level at the plant where and at the big tank so that it you know it, it works i mean jimmy and leon have already been in discussions about the chlorine uh, amounts and that um, doesn't preclude us from doing more having more discussions well i think that one of the things we try to accomplish was prevent dead head dead head lines mm -hmm. and pressure and quality of water and chlorination We've spent quite a bit of time and effort to fix that. I think we need, to, as our responsibility, is to evaluate and see did we accomplish what we were trying to do. Well, and we've done that work at the plant as well. It's right. just going to affect what water they're putting out. So. Hmm. Actually, the plant should save you more money on chemicals. You have one as much chemicals as want now. You want? Okay, stand up and. It's because you got the new filters and everything. See, we was running out the dirty filters. 
and they would bind up so we had to backwash every 16, 17 hours. Now it should be like every 32 to 40 hours. So that way you're not going to use as much chemicals. Because then you're going to backwash and take the, the good clean water and take it down here and put it down here. I would want to bring it up. So actually, this right here should save us money. It should. Well, what we found out too is that the backwash pump uh, was not supplying the necessary we volume or pressure yes. to lift up the media and the filters and actually flush it out. And so uh, there was enough money left over from the plant project that we are able to purchase a new, it was either repair of the old pump with a new impeller and then we didn't know what we had or a new pump and there wasn't that much difference in the maintenance repair and the new pump is about about ten thousand i think something like that we had enough money left in the uh, water plant project to go ahead and purchase a new backwash pump the motor for it is good it was just a matter of replacing that pump and so techco can do that for us at no charge and so just a matter of one, one of the things that showed up that we need to do to help it to operate at peak efficiency. Anything on chlorine levels? And I've got one more thing before he leaves. Okay. We have some employees who are concerned about our discussion we had at the last meeting with Viola. Viola, Viola, how you say it? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of them have been long term employees mm -hmm. that are nearing their end of tenure with us. And I, what I would like to do personally, and, and, you know, and I can only speak for myself, I don't want our employees running scared. We have a responsibility as elected officials of the city to look at every opportunity we can to deliver quality water, quality sewer service to this community, and at a very reasonable and, and competitive rate. We have to look at every option. We are not. We are not going to. I don't plan on. I don't plan on making a decision that's going to be extremely detrimental to either the city, the residents, or the employees working here. We will do our due diligence, but we have a responsibility. Yeah, I mean, you you need to take care of the employees, and definitely wouldn't want them scared. But uh, we have to make sure that our water is where it's supposed to be and what it is supposed to be and at the same time not losing so much money on it so um, yeah I mean it's, it's with any job and I don't think anybody here would make a decision that would just rip away someone's you know benefits or whatever um, without and there are creative opportunities that if you've got people ending their end of their tenure they could be they continue could be an employee of the city and we could lease those individuals to that but we're not anywhere near that stage we don't we're not even 100 percent sure we want to invite them to do a proposal at this stage of the game so there's a there's a lot of due diligence on our behalf before we even request that proposal because this is going to be an, an expense on their behalf before they did anything yeah. well for me it was the the, the glaring downside to what they were going to do was to uh, put all employees into a 401k plan and I didn't know how that was going to affect the, the ones who were getting close to retirement, uh, how it would affect taking them out of SERS and putting them into an individual 401k. So that was the, to me, was the downside for what I heard or the biggest but am I, am I wrong, Terry, that if we had employees that was wanting to retire in the next five years, that things could be created to where you could keep them as our employees and lease them to that new organization? But again, we're not, that, that, that is so premature to have that discussion, but I just want to... There's a lot of different things that you could negotiate into a contract, especially when it, with regard to existing employees. You obviously don't want to do anything that's going to be a detriment to some of your more senior employees of the city have been loyal as long. Um, it's just what what they would be willing to do. That's right. Cool. It's all it, it, part it's of all the part of the, yeah. yeah. But there, I mean, employee leases are kind of common, especially in transition periods, with a lot of different entities too. So, so for lack of better terms, 
we also want to make we watch out for our own boy. He ain't Jimmy anymore. <laughs> Better time, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. I will say that he's typical of our supervisors who are very cost conscious about yeah. uh, our department. I don't know. <laughs> but maintenance, distribution, water what? plant, they're very aware of our situation. And All right. Uh, brings us down to uh, Veolia. Do you want to discuss them? More or I think it would be great if we could bring somebody in and can get our water plant and our sewer system and maybe even help be involved in negotiation to I mean I don't think they could I don't know they could be creative and, and work out something with the regional wastewater plant and, and get reasonable rates or not. My biggest fear is what they would end up charging for management fees would scare us to death. I'm just being quite honest. Well, but we don't they, know. They have said that so far they haven't had any issues with that, of course, you know, that's them speaking, but still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Their contract with them the city of Hardenburg should be subject to open records. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what well, I would really like to see is I went up and talked with the mayor. I talked yeah. with him for See an what hour. some other people are doing. Yeah. I talked with him for an hour and a half. That's what I was going to say. You did talk to him, so what was the take on it? Uh, he's, they've been with Veolia for about 16 years. And beforehand, uh, they had a water plant that was, was not functioning well. It was misplaced. It was taking water out of the Rough River Reservoir, and so they were dealing with the same problems that we do, taking it out of the river. And uh, Veolia was, I think, instrumental in getting their new plant, uh, getting it located where it is, using the water that it's using. They moved to us out of county, uh, had a totally different setup. Uh, did I describe to you the plant up there? They built a new plant about uh, 11 years ago with $7 million. Uh, you go into it, it looks like it was built last week. Yeah, you did tell I told you about that. But they have three wells that actually they probably could be just popping straight out of the well. I'm just curious, before I forget this thought, I know we're next to Rough River, and we know that Rough River is not the most ideal place in the world to pull water off that water. That's one of our problems. But Beaver Dam doesn't sit next to a river. How are they? How are they able to drill wells and pull water out of wells? I mean, but they're not pulling out very much. Whatever they, I've been told, that what they pull out is they couldn't live on it, you know. But my point is, we're sitting next to a river, so think you would think next to that we could pull water out of and just let the natural filtration process of of, of ground to help reduce the turbidity uh, in the. I had walked call a geologist that he is, he knows is familiar with our area and he said it would be useless for us to drill a well in the Hartford area. Uh, he said uh, it, it would be too much iron in it. Uh, it wouldn't be a sufficient flow of water. It's just knowing the type of soil that we've got yeah. here. He's a geologist and he's familiar with our area. That doesn't mean that we can't go somewhere else find a water source and pump it to our plant, you know, but that's a that's a big long range project, I would think, but uh, we, no, that was the first thing I did when I came back is if they can do wells like that, why can't we? we? <laughs> yeah. And uh, unfortunately it didn't pan out, so. My, my only fear of what you said about Hardensburg, right, Hardensburg, right, is, um, Viola came in and knew it was not working on Rough River. Yeah. That's that's my fear. And uh, But they made it cost effective for them to do what they did and they're yeah. they're obviously yeah, they, they already did. in a, They did. I mean, uh, you know, and 
I mean, I think I'm kind of like David is that if we can find some other communities and pull some contracts and take a look and see what they're charging are, then that gives us a little bit more of an idea of what to expect. I mean, they're right. I don't want to ask them to do $50,000, $75,000 worth of work, and we're not going to do it. I want to feel like that there's a fair chance that we, we could entertain the idea. Yeah. What Harnsburg does is, of course, there's a, a contract amount every year, and they calculate that 67% of that contract is paid out of their water revenue. Thirteen percent of it comes out of their uh, sanitation collection, and uh, the rest of it comes out of their general fund that they pay for. So it, they're losing money on theirs too. The only thing that matters is the water. Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing but that's being managed though is the water. Unless part. that was no, just the new water. They, oh, they manage oh, the water. They, they manage everything. Yeah. Yeah. They manage everything except oh. for they manage everything except for police fire department. department and the police department. Okay. They manage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, thought, I was going to say, say they're the not self-sufficient. I thought we discussed this, but uh, we did. They, okay, but yeah. they they do everything. They do the the water, the sanitation, the maintenance, uh, distribution. They do everything, and the the water plant. Is not a Hardsburg water plant, it's a Breckenridge County water plant. That Veolia provides the water for all of Breckenridge, Breckenridge County. County. Okay. So it was a Hardensburg water plant. It was. And now it's a Breckenridge County plant. Now it's a regional yeah. water plant. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nasty word, right? <laughs> Regionalization. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he said they're highly organized, they've got a lot of resources, uh, engineers, planners, uh, they've, they've got this, they are a, probably the largest management company in the world. They're a French company and they have uh, connections with all these different suppliers and so they buy in such bulk that they're able to buy, uh, you know, uh, Did he give me an idea what his, what their management fees were? No, he didn't. I didn't. I didn't dare to ask him. But I thought he might drop it, but he didn't. Uh, I will say this: I did mention to him our one percent occupational tax, and his eyes lit up like this. So I sent him a copy of our ordinance. So Hardenberg may start. <laughs> Turn about fair play. Yeah, so we need a copy of his contract. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it it should be open records, as Tara said, though. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, we could we could ask for it. I, I I don't know if it needs to be made into motion. I mean, I, I think we need to warrant more discussions with Viola. Is that how you pronounce it, Viola? Viola. Viola. Uh, it's a French word that means uh, I don't speak French, but it means something like. It's a French word that means French. <laughs> yeah. What did you say, Tara? It's a French word that means French something. Uh, <laughs> it means strength or or. Uh, I forget power or something like that. I forget what it is. I would like for us to pursue trying to determine maybe communities of our size that I think we're definitely maybe interested in water and sewer for sure. Yeah. And see if we can get some idea of what the cost to do that is. Uh, management fees. Do you remember looking at their the information he passed out? It showed you in Kentucky, you know, some other comparable or where they were working. I don't know if they're the same size. I mean, and I think you can look at Hardenburg is about as close as you're, we're going to get to something our size. But you can look at, I mean, Hardenburg's not even as big as, well, yeah. They're 2,900. Okay. They got about 1,200 water customers in Hardenburg. But you could even look at Tennessee or something like that. Yeah. I, I'll call him. David. Your demographics will be different. with the information, you know, and just tell him we want to just, uh, Talk with other comparable sized cities, you know, in Tennessee, Indiana, Illinois, places like that. They're all over. So I don't have a problem calling. So the only thing that Hardenburg manages is, is our police fire in City Hall? Yeah. We're doing what? Huh? We're doing well. They're considerably better off than they were 10 years ago. I mean, we've had reason, but we, 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 we went on to place a rough river. I mean, we were in Hardenburg quite a bit. I mean, Smallest Walmart known to man. Yeah, you can't literally turn around that building. 
<laughs> a little bitty. All right. So I know all about little bitty buildings. <laughs> Any more discussion about building? All right, uh, let's move right on to the employee handbook. Uh, I presume everybody's had a copy available to them and has bored themselves to death trying to read. Yeah, I've right. been reading on that thing for three days. So here's the thing, whenever I pulled it up and I was able to finally open it, I could not see the suggestions in the margin. So I didn't even get to look at what she, I mean, it said in the email, the suggestions are in the margins, I couldn't even see it. So I have not even got to review what the suggestions actually are. I haven't had an opportunity to look at it either. I just got it two days ago. Like there's a shaded area that, right. and, and there's a darker shaded area. There's, you know, there's. Right, but I couldn't region. see that. Whenever I pull it up, I just see, you know, what's in, what's on the normal side. So that was the problem for me. I mean, I could see that there was something, but I, I couldn't look at it. Well, once, once we have enough time to, you have enough time to examine this, what I think we'd like to do, since they want to come down and meet with me, but I don't want to meet with them without getting input from everybody here. So what I'd like to, for you to think about is, like three of you meet with me one time, we go over everything and talk about changes, additions, deletions, whatever, and then do the same thing with three more at a later or at another time. That way then we can schedule a time for her to come down and, and I can meet with her with the suggestions. For yeah, this is not a small undertaking, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't want to do this setting in a council meeting, mm -hmm. especially whenever we haven't been able to actually review it and it's so big. Um, it is so, really overwhelming, isn't it? It is. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that need to be done, but for me, like, getting that done is a priority. I just haven't been able to review it. And secondly, we need to talk to them about a wage scale, a real one. Um, eventually, there's other things that we need to, to discuss, you know, with them because I know that you had some samples that you were looking at and we just never really came around to any of that stuff. An evaluation system that actually, you know, is used and <laughs> kind of, you know, well, forms for employee discipline and, and yes. meetings. Think about They're it. all in there. I, I mean, I want to ask a question and, I, and I'm, I'm yeah, just throwing this out for yeah. argument's sake. It's a hundred and how many pages? 141, 141 actually. The last part's an appendix that has all the sample forms. And yeah. 141 pages long. It doesn't have to be that long. I no, I, no, I understand that. My, my point of it is we've gone to the trouble of asking KLC to provide us something and we have to review it and do our due diligence and to stay on task. Is it reasonable to say, and that's the time frame I'm going to throw out, that to look at what to review this, to look at wage scales, to look at all the stuff you just mentioned, that we're going to charge ourselves that we need to have it done by the end of this calendar year. Have it finished in something in place to be in place by January one. Is that unreasonable? Is that too long a time frame or is that not long enough? I'm asking. I, I think it's probably reasonable. I don't think that it would take that long. Most of the stuff is just going to be, and I'm guessing because like I said, I haven't been able to see it, but it's going to be basic law changes. Um, stuff that has changed within the law with human resources it's and things very like that. Detailed. There mean, also, it's, there's yeah. also going to be issues in there that you all will need to address, though. It's not just they yeah. can make suggestions, but others have. That's why I'm, say policies, things that's like why I'm saying that, that stuff that's specific to us right. um, is, the, is the things that we're going to have to spend the most time on. So that's why I'm yeah. saying that you know here this is essentially the first of August, and that gives us if we if we take it and, and everybody takes a copy and reads it and you're not going to be able to sit down in one reading and read all this i mean i don't think anybody's going to have that kind of energy to do it and then once we've been through it going back and we realize there's going to be areas like holidays and and you know uh all vacation all this kind of stuff that requires us to tailor make what we want to do and then address those subjects have discussions on them and then go from there that's why i'm saying you know if we can get it done, have everything completed by December 31st and voted on and approved and in effect by January 1, then I feel like that what we've done is two things. One is, is we got a living document that is important. And number two is we've done our due diligence and we've proved to our employees. We're serious about this. We want to do it right way. 
We want to make sure that we protect the city and protect our employees. And we just did not do this. And oh, we got it. Yeah, I vote. I make a motion and uh, we go I on. I have to I, say I something that, though. Isn't there wasn't there a timeline in that? I think. I think your contract, you're going to have to go back to your contract because they're so long that you have your contract with KLC to do this. And number two is you're probably going to make, want to make an effort to try and get it done before Thanksgiving because whatever policies you adopt, you're going to, you're going to have to have in place come January 1 because of New Year's Day and those particular holidays. And second, it never fails in November and December. You have very, very limited schedules to even have a quorum. And, get and I agree with that's why I said they'll December 31st for it to be completed. Voted on, published, whatever we got to do, everything's done. But we got to look place. at our contract. Right. Yeah, and yeah. that might that might burn out that I, might burn out some time on us. I, I that just occurred to me, but I think it said something like sixty or ninety days or something like I was that. Just thinking. Yes, yeah. give you two weeks or so <laughs> to yeah. look. Uh, at, gonna, it won't yeah. happen to, to look over it. I mean, I've been going over it. You know. No, I laugh because <laughs> I know everybody's like, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It probably needs to be done quickly. But two three weeks, and then we can get together in groups of three and. Look at what changes you made notes of, and mm -hmm. and then compile them all into one, and then we can meet with Andrea. And Do you have any idea what the contract terms are? I, I think we're going to have to. Um, <laughs> I, I think we're going to have to have a printed copy of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm like you. When I got to looking at it, I don't see there's going to be yeah, an option. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to go through all of that and, and keep up with where you are. There's yours. <laughs> Miss HR. Uh, all right. If there are notes in the margin, I would request one. If, if that's you would put a printed copy because it's going to be very difficult. I, to get I, I hate to say yeah. it. we are going to have to. Have you you can't keep up with it's it. And it's make notes on it and all that. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could, but. We're going to have to so create an insert mine. box. You don't got your printed copy? I got my printed right. copy. Jerry came prepared. <laughs> he must have been a boy scout. You already, been read through, you already read through it? I spent all day long yesterday on it. Did you go, how far did you get through? All the way to the back page. Did you really? All right. Yes, I did. Good for you. So, But it took all day so long. Do you want to, all day long. <laughs> do you want to just brief us? Or? Give a, <laughs> don't give us the cliff notes. Woo. Give us the Scoggin notes on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get you copies of those and as soon as we can. And, uh, as soon as we can afford to pay for the paper. Oh, <laughs> it is a lot of paper. You know, okay. I, I hate to print that much of anything, but I think it's not its not going to work if we don't. It's hard to read notations on the digital format. Yeah, it is. Can everybody do that without the way that's printed? Uh, yeah. yeah, but I'm going to tell you. It ain't easy. <laughs> it's not easy even with my glasses on. <laughs> I've got a magnifying glass. To it's see. little print. Yeah. See, because he's smart enough to get a magnifying glass. It's just, okay. yeah. All right. Uh, but let's try to uh, attack it as quickly as we possibly can to not lag on it. All right. Uh, next thing we have here is the priest house. I did get to look at the title on that, and sorry, I was trying to get over to that other meeting, and I forgot that sitting at the office, but everything looks pretty good, except there is a reservation in the deed to the city of Hartford that uh, for Wayne Priest and his sister Adrian, that so long as they're living, they do have a 60-day option to come in um, and uh, remove the timber along the river, as well as any flat stones making up the patio and walkways around the house. Uh, if the house ever ceases to be used as a residence. So we would have to give notice if, that, if, if the character and nature of the house were to change. But I couldn't find any other specific reservations. Is that covenant transferable to something if we were to sell the house to somebody else? It would run with the land, yeah. I don't know that it would be, it, it wasn't inherent that the city and themselves had to keep the property, no. But, you know, I, I was talking to George about that earlier, too. If you go up and actually physically view the property, it does back right up to your water plant, and there's actually gates that open up to it. So before you did anything and sell it outright, you would, I, you know, if you were to sell it, then you definitely would want to reserve some access back there because I think that would be crucial, getting certain equipment and access back there. It comes out and uses their driveway. Right out. now it does because it's yeah. not their driveway, it's yours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. You probably want to. <laughs> yeah. but. Um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts about, about the property. And does it serve any value to the city other than access to the water plant? How long have we had it? 2002. 
What would we do with the money if we sold it? Actually, it's supposed to be in the general fund, I think. It's not earmarked for anything specific. But that doesn't mean we can't put in a special account somewhere, put in save the theater. I don't care. It's a nice, it's a nice home. Okay. If you were to sell it, I think you would have to do your tenant. The, you know, the, he's put money and time into it. I think you would have to give him, you know, adequate notice and allow him to make arrangements for his family. Um, it is a very nice lot. It is a very nice home, from what it appears. I've not been on the inside, but pictures I've seen. Mitch posts. He it's looks well like he, he's, he's done a very good job. You know, I I wouldn't sell it for any sort of assessment value. I think you'd have to get a fair market on that end. At the same time, though, from a standpoint of if you could rent it for its fair value, it may end up being a co-producing piece of property that still gives you access to the water plant. So I think those are all kind of matters that you have to weigh. I don't want to put ourselves in the position of being landlords. landlords. I mean, that's what we're doing now, right? Yeah. I'm not but we happen to have had a good tenant. And that's not always the case. I'm not advocating one thing or another. I'm just saying yeah. here's a piece of property that right now we're not realizing anything out of it. And uh, I just think, you know, we need to do something with it. To I think we should probably just go ahead and sell it. That's my opinion. If we keep it, we need rent income. Huh? If we keep it, we actually need the rent. Income. Yeah, it, we do. I mean, one of two things. I mean, right now, it's, it's yeah. probably costing us money, other than it's property that's being maintained and it's not it's not devaluing any. Um, I think I, I'm trying to agree. One of two things needs to happen. We need to get rental income out of it and generate income for the city, or it needs to be sold. That's my opinion. I'm not really strong one way or the other. I, right now, I'm not in the world's best frame of mind about being a landlord, but. <laughs> You better get happy about it. <laughs> you ought to be a little happy now. You got one of them rented. <laughs> yeah, well, still need one more. <laughs> but anyway, do we know what the uh, potential price value would be on it? I, I've not been in it. I don't. I don't have a clue um, what the layout or anything is. Is it two, three bedroom, four bedroom? I don't have any idea. You ever been in it? Mm -mm. I think we'd almost would have to get it appraised to see what I'm thinking. before we even make any kind of. Can we get um, Roger to appraise it? Get them to appraise it and then, or or our market value price. Or I mean, yes, somebody else. Would we, I mean, would you do? Would a realtor? I mean, we would want to put it in the realtor's hand, but then again, you're going to have to pay a realtor's fee. Yeah. I, my, from a standpoint of the fact that you do have a city employee who's lived there who's put an investment in it and everything if you get an appraisal value you might even approach that individual to see if they want to go ahead that's what i was thinking <laughs> also, <laughs> also right. first first right of refusal on the property because he has made an investment in the, in the property granted he's gone against his rent payment but yes that's you want this as a motion i make a motion i mean if you want it as a motion i make a motion that you check with somebody like roger embry to get a, a FMV on the fair market value of the property, and that we offer it to the current tenant first right of refusal. Get an appraisal first. Yep. See where that comes out. At. Okay. Fair enough. I'll second the motion. Right, some more discussion. All in favor, lift your hand. Thank you, motion to carry. Anybody opposed? All right, the next one is Memorial Gardens. Uh, as Tony mentioned, the paving has been done. Uh, if, you if you were able to drive to the back, there has been a turnaround. He did go ahead and put a turnaround back there because it is just basically one lane going in. Um, uh, Thomas Randolph called me yesterday or the day before, I don't know, they all run together. But his brother had called him and he was just very ecstatic. He was very elated by what we had done. It went beyond their expectations, I think. And so, uh, you know, I think 
they're still trying to find the the uh, plant of all the graves. Uh, trying, still trying to locate that. They think it exists. They just can't. They know where it was at one time with the Taylors, but they don't know if the son uh, inherited it. And doesn't know what he's got, or they pay attention to it, but. Anyway, we got one part of it done. Uh, we still have, they did ask for us to put gates in. And I told him, you know, that we had talked about putting in two posts, the gates, and even having an arch that said Memorial Gardens. Uh, the fellow up at Litchfield, who does, that I talked to the longest about this, he said, I wouldn't put aluminum gates. He said, you know, somebody bangs into them, they're bent just right away. He said, what he does is he does steel gates and he cuts out the memorial gardens. He said, there'd be 10 inch letters that he could get across there that said memorial gardens. And he uses a plasma cutter, so it's very neat and clean. Uh, but he gave me the, you know, the bid or the, the estimate on everything, so my suggestion right now would be let's put in the gates, the post, and the arch, and we'll put in the columns later on. Uh, we'll do that ourselves. How much is that? Uh, he didn't separate it out, so the whole thing to start with was 5,900. Uh, I'm, est I'm estimating that the columns and the labor to put everything in was probably going to be somewhere between a thousand fifteen hundred. So I would say we're looking maybe. I, I'm not. I'm not even going to estimate. I, I'll call him tomorrow and tell him and get a cost. Let's days. get it separated so we can make a decision. Go ahead and get it done. Yeah. Anyway, that's that would be the only other thing that would that we could do. That would, the, uh, I, I, when I drove by it last night, there's a couple of big snags, at least one huge snag. Were yeah. they able to work on Have they done anything with those yet? Uh, they, they had that intent. I don't know that they had uh, gotten to them yet. There's two There's two back there that... Uh, Needs to come down. Yeah, Jason mentioned uh, that they were going to get them, but I don't, I don't think they got to them today, but I'm not sure where, where he was today, but I know Mike wouldn't wouldn't uh, out with him so I, they didn't cut down any trees. Actually, if you can we? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Actually, where it lays and the way it rolls on the blacktop, it's more, of, it's more attractive cymetery than open. So I, I, I thought we already had this conversation about the cost of the gate and everything. Can we not go ahead and make a motion for the total cost? I mean, you think it's going to be around 7400 for everything, right? No. 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 Paving was seventy five hundred itself. Now I'm talking about the gates and all that because we've already. Oh no! When when uh, he was doing everything, uh, putting up when uh, he wasn't doing the sign, but he was putting up the posts, the gates, and the columns, and it was fifty nine hundred. Okay. At that time, we told him we had somebody else that was going to put up the sign, but they were putting they were going to use like four inch letters, you know, letters that tall. Right. He's going to do 10 inch letters. Okay. So, so it was about 5,900. So 5,900 for the gate and the letters and all that, right? Well, not for the letters. For the for the gate post, the gates, and the columns. Okay. He is, so he, we don't know how much the arch is going to be? No. Okay. The other one, the other, the four inch letter was like $250 was all it was. Okay. So it's... But I, I can call him tomorrow and I can let everybody know what I'm saying right now. Let's wait on the columns. We can put those in ourselves. You know, we can order them from the ones that you all like, that materials you like. We can order that ourselves direct. We can put it in ourselves. Right. So that we can save that part of it. I'm just wondering, do we have to wait until you, have, you make this phone call and everything to 
to go ahead. Uh, did we already make a motion on that? I'm confused about well, we, what we, we approved the black copy. That's so do we have to wait until well, you call him about that before we can put a motion on the table and get that? Well, if you, you make a motion, I just can't tell you what the price is going to be. Make a motion with the, not to exceed a certain amount. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you leave out the columns and include this, then it probably is not going to be more than $5,000, my guess. We did have a discussion at lunch today with Tommy's brother, David. Okay. And uh, he saw the black top look very nice. He also mentioned there was several Civil War uh, veterans buried up there. Yeah. There may be some grant money available to help do this. Yeah, there probably is. But writing a grant and requesting that finding a grant writing a grant requesting and that getting money. the money so tony you go ahead <laughs> we'll wait <laughs> um you don't want me writing any of that how about if i call <laughs> and find out what the price is going to be and then poll everybody individually and i Tara, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think it would be safer for y'all to probably just go ahead and vote up to a certain amount. That way, if it falls in there, you, you know what it is. Is it going to change your all's opinion? If it's $500 one way or another, probably not. Okay, I make a motion that we invest uh, $5,000, approve $5,000 for the gate and arch to be installed and the poles to be installed um, at Memorial Gardens, not to exceed $5,000. Did I already say that? To be funded yep. from what fund? What fund is it coming out of? I forgot what we had said before. Occupy all the time. It's all the place we got it. Yeah. None of it came out of economic development. Uh, not economic okay. development. Occupational tax. tax. That's where that came out. Okay. Second the motion. Okay. Discussion. Nobody discussing. Then, if you're in favor of the motion, then up, lift your hand. All right, thank you. <coughs> All right, it brings us down to. Uh, let's see. We've already gotten your. We've already talked flush hydrant scoring levels. Your duty and the law. So it brings me down to uh, talking about the things that are not on the agenda. Uh, first one is the sidewalk project. Um, I told you, well, I don't know if I've told you or not. Sidewalk project was denied. Um, estimate 683,000. Low bid 1.34 million. High bid 2. Point Eight million. Uh, went back. Engineer met with the low bidder, trying to work something out. What they came up with, they were they were just taking things out till they got the price down to where our grant is. All right. I brought up. Brought the map show you so that okay here's the project okay this is Union Street Main Street Washington Walnut Clay all right what they've determined is we can go one side from down here at the pump the transfer pump for the sewer up to the consignment shop. Not both sides, just one side. This is for that Trail Town project getting down to the boat ramp. It skips across Main Street to Apple Alley and finishes up to Clay Street. Then it does two blocks of downtown. And that's it. Does a little bit down here at the Agri Grove entrance. But that's it. Two blocks, one side of town. Two blocks on that. Just one. Other side of town, which is all we were going. I mean, we were going to do all the way up to Walnut mm -hmm. on that one side. Does that take you from Union to Washington? Do what? Does that 
Is that where it takes you? Well, it leaves out Washington. It leaves out all this in front of uh, City Hall, uh, the community center, Baptist Church leaves all that out. It leaves out all of Walnut Street, which was going down to Clay Street, where there is no sidewalk. They were going to put one in. Um, we have to buy the lights and install them. Uh, the four foot brick pavement that was going to be on the sidewalks downtown is out there. We're going to put in grass. I said, no, we're not doing grass. We'll put in our own brick pavement. Uh, but that's what we'd have to do the brick. We'd have to do the lights. Uh, but that would, that's all it'll do, and that's $611,000. What was the engineer's comment? We project 683000 and the bid come in at one point three. He said as far as the, the items, the different items, the individual items, he said there, there were not that much difference. So it had to be in the labor. And the labor, he estimated based on a project they had done recently that evidently was not governed by the government uh, setting the... Is this labor being charged a prevailing wage? Huh? Is this labor being charged a prevailing wage? Uh, yeah. Why? We're not, we're not required to do prevailing wage. That's part of the grant process. We, if we get the grant, we have to do the government prevailing wage. If we borrowed the money, if we borrowed the money, is that because it's federal? Mm -hmm. Is it because it's a federal grant? Mm -hmm. See, two thirty one is federal highway. So we have to pay a prevailing wage. Yep. Even though the state repealed it. And it's ridiculous. I mean, they had to do it. That's, down that's here. quadruple the labor dollar. Yeah, we had to do we had to do it down here at the water plant. Everything that we've done has had the prevailing wage. Well, first of all, Liz, I got a nephew that works. He's a civil engineer for the city of Henderson. He said the average price for laying concrete sidewalk, forming it and laying it should be concrete and all should be somewhere between six and six dollars and eighty cents a square foot. Uh, let me rephrase that. He said six dollars. Ray Wilkerson, who's doing the wall down here, said six eighty. Um, you do the math. That's a hell of a lot of square footage, and that's a long way. I just don't see the numbers. Hollis, we were over at Beaver Dam and uh, City Hall the other night, and that concrete is some of the most immaculate looking concrete I've ever seen, and Hollis Lawrence laid it. Hollis Lawrence is not cheap, but he does probably as good a job I've ever seen. And I don't think it would, it would we need to, I think we need to ask him, was he interested in bidding it? And I think Ray's got another guy that comes in. Yeah. I'm not, as much as I'd like to see a sidewalk, and I won't ever tell you right now, I'm gonna abstain from voting on it, because I own some property on that, long 231 I'm not going to make a motion that we spend the money and do it I'm not going to vote on it I will abstain but I am not in favor of encouraging anybody else to take a vote and vote to do the sidewalk until we get other opportunities to see what other quotes are that is ridiculous yeah and in my, my honest opinion and I think it's a misuse of taxpayer dollars and grant money to pay, pay prevailing wages I really do I think it's insane <laughs> well I don't think we have a choice on that one though how much of the grant money is it? Six hundred and seven thousand. And all that's grant. How much? Six hundred seven. Uh, we've got some in kind. We've got. Uh, uh, here it is, right here. Uh, just a construction cost was six hundred eleven thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars. Uh, projected budget. Well, let me just say match. Our match in kind work is twenty six thousand eight forty. Utility work was ten thousand, and the grant for engineering was ninety eight thousand. So we have a net available for construction of six hundred twenty four thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars. So we can spend using that grant six hundred twenty four thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars. If somebody could do that project for anything close to that. 
I'd be much in favor of it. Right now, not too much in favor of it. If we do, if we use the grant and do what we can this year and reapply for another grant next year, they say our chances of getting that grant go up because the grant people are more likely to want to see a project completed or added on to or something. So, but uh, I'm like Tony, I don't think that's a very wise use of. I mean, what what difference is it whether we pay a million three hundred thousand now altogether or do it over three years? It's still a bad bad use of the funds. The only thing that I will say about the sidewalk going down um, Main Street, if you've not walked down it, it's not in front of our buildings. It's down there where Steve uh, Gary owns. I guess it used to be the Red Front Store or whatever it was. There's black top. It, it is a trip hazard down down that way toward your way. It, between us and you, it's a really bad trip hazard. Yeah, my sidewalk's pretty good shape. And it's pretty good shape in front of us, but it's really but bad down there. Between there, there it, uh, I've seen people fall. Before. We had a girl who worked for me. She'd been down to the bank when it was there, and, and she coming back. She, I mean, it's this much different elevation to the concrete, mm -hmm. and she fell, and uh, it didn't. She didn't get hurt, and then she uh, came up there, and she said she looked to see if anybody saw her, and uh, at that time, Schultz's menswear was there. And I said, well, it, it took Kathy uh, two days to get her mannequin straightened back up where it had been over the last. <laughs> <laughs> and there for a long time, I remembered uh, what uh, she had on that day. And every time she wore it, I said, that's your fallout. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is a dangerous yes. spot. I mean, can, can we do that? Can we just, can we see what Ray comes back at? Can we see what other, I mean, if it's prevailing wage, let me rephrase that. I don't know. I mean, it won't work. Never mind. I mean, this is a no win scenario. But we Scott, want to know why we got budget problems in, 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 on the state and national level. There's too many people dictating how you got to spend it. Um, you're going to call the fellow from Overbay. Hollis? Yeah. I'll text him. He won't answer a cell phone call. Okay. He never answers a cell phone uh, call. <laughs> but I'm afraid his prevailing wage is, wage is what he normally charges because he's not cheap. But he does do beautiful work. Okay. Is there any action going to take on this? Can't see now. We'll proceed to go on. Um. I had a policeman who resigned, um, Josh Smith, is going to work for the school board uh, as a resource officer. And the other one is uh, McDonald. <laughs> I don't know how he's qualified to work for him, but anyway, that's their problem, that's not ours. Anyway, uh, his last effective date is uh, right before school starts. I think, well, actually, he's going until September the 4th or something like that. Knowing that he's resigned leaves us one man short, so uh, we've already had an application from, uh, I can't think what his name is now, Roger. What's Roger's last name? Are we able to staff? Are we able to cover without hiring somebody? No. How many officers do we have currently now on staff after Josh has left? After he left four. How many police officers do we have? I'm not sure. How many have they got over? You know, they, I don't know off the top of my head. I know. They have funds for their alcohol. Six, maybe. Seven. And we can't because we're not big enough. Oh, it's 
not even that. It's a subjective list. Anyway, we've had an application, and I've already told him to come on over, and he's uh, already certified. He's experienced. And, um, Where's he from? Yes. I didn't make a note down here. He's, he's working at Beaverdam right now. He's going to put in his two weeks notice to Beaverdam uh, and come over. I'm trying to think. It's Roger, William. I can't think of the last name. We have to advertise, do we not? Do we, we have to advertise, do we not? Gosh, I have to go back and look at that. We're not creating well, isn't position. it prudent to at least advertise? I'm not creating a position. I'm just filling an empty position. I know, but isn't it still prudent to advertise? Um, you can hire, but the, the last time I thought we had, um, didn't we do away with one and then you had to, you were, you were recreating it? But this one's just filling a yeah. position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this filling a position from our applicant files. Uh, I mean, we can go ahead and advertise for it, but. I just think it makes more one. sense anytime you have a position like that open to advertise it and get people to apply for that specific position because you don't know what is out there unless you do that. Right. You know, I mean. He still may, might, might be a most viable candidate. He you may don't know. be, but that's yeah. Fine. No, no, we we'll put it like her. I mean, I'm not saying that we have to do it that way. I'm just saying that's how I see it. I, I just, that's how I would want to do it. You know? so more open and transparent. That there's, not that, there's not that many that are already qualified, or certified. You know, just curious, with the sheriff's department, can we, con can, can we contract, I mean, can we work out something? You know, this is an opportunity. I'm just going to throw this out. The other night when we went to Beaver Dam, I said I'm hoping somewhere down the down the road that we can look at having one fire department, one police department. May not be ever in our lifetime. May right. not be any of our grandkids' lifetime. No idea. But you know what? Is it not an opportunity to say, can you know, can we contract with Beaver Dam to help provide service? We'll work you out with a contract. That way we eliminate payroll benefits and everything else. Can we do it with the sheriff's department? Can we think outside of the box and see if it's a, if it, the opportunity arises to do this more efficiently? Yeah. I'm just I want I want the coverage. I think we need to have the coverage. But is there a more is there a more effective way of doing this? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I've talked with Leroy about you know say at midnight to an 8 a.m. shift or something like that. You know, can we utilize sheriff's department or whatever? I don't. I don't think they've got but maybe one on duty. I know at one time we were the only one that had anybody duty in the county. Yeah. At night, I know. I, I know that, or I was told that. I don't know if that's true or not. I think they've got the sheriff's department's got one on duty that time of night they for count the whole that. county. We've got state police all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, but they may. Oh, but I mean, there are other like Forge Mill and Centertown. Before Centertown created a police department, they did work the sheriff's department. Who was it, Dalton? Well, something they did at one time. I don't know. I don't know if they would train them. Because they don't keep somebody there. Right there the All the time, though. I mean, it's just somebody passes forward. through, makes it. Okay. Yeah, because they're outliers. Now, yeah. you are going to have, obviously, a little more presence if we actually are right here. With the shirt. Blue blur. Yeah. And I don't know. Can I my bags? <laughs> <laughs> is that a habit? But I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what their operation is. Yeah, I have to really. What position is Josh? We could have filled up a little bit. Do you know? Got out and rented the car. I didn't know how to do it. Yeah, I didn't know. Hybrid car. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay. Um. You got two more things I've got. Uh, one of them is on fireworks. Had somebody approach me about uh, us maybe doing some fireworks, cooperating with the park board to help fund fireworks display on the 4th. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what we're seeing is that uh, Beaverdam wants to keep theirs, but they would like, would like to do it maybe at Beaverdam do it on Saturday night when they have a concert. 
and then we would do it uh, on the 4th at the park and try to I don't know, make these hard for fireworks or whatever. And I told them I'd bring it up before the council and see what I don't know. Thought. It's an opportunity for a festival of some sort. Maybe we could set up booths and make some money. I don't know. <laughs> We're talking about festivals. I'd, I'd like to see, see us have a citywide summer picnic sometime. Oh, that would be neat. Using all the picnic tables. Uh, yeah, yeah, the picnic tables that are finally not in a pyramid any longer. <laughs> <laughs> but we could have it. You know, I mean, have they got I any idea personally love fireworks, so if anything y'all did with fireworks, <laughs> I am front row. Have they got any idea from a budget standpoint what kind of money they're talking about? Uh, I think Beaver Dam spent fifteen thousand dollars on theirs last year. I think. I don't think these had to be that expensive. We spent about five hundred. I said I would bring it before the. The council. When it was all over with, I spent about seven hundred dollars. Oh, after dollars. Meredith and then went back. Yes, yeah, I spent seven. I spent seven hundred dollars on fireworks this year. Not all the ones that we saw at the reception. Though. Now, you know, before when they were at the when Sparks were, did they not get sponsors and stuff, or was it the chamber? Yeah. Chamber did it. That's chamber. Yeah. Chamber. I think it's a good idea. I, I don't know that we're prepared to make a decision tonight on that. Where the funding comes from? Yeah. I told about. You think about it. I told about bring it up before you. I like the idea. I just don't know about the Okay. Money. And then we got a request. Um, that's a lot of money. They're so pretty. That's the thing that loves them. I see money. That's all I see. <laughs> we got a request from an organization that's trying to promote Marcy's Law. Uh, Marcy's Law is focusing in on the rights of victims. Uh, and they, what they were asking was could they come and meet with us at a meeting and present what Marcy's Law is all about, trying to gain our support that we would uh, you know, support the law. sign a paper that we support Marcy's Law. What kind of victims? Um, any kind of a victim. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> sure, I'm willing to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just uh, one particular crime, but it's all. My phone's dead or I'll be Googling it. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, I'm doing it right now. But it, it was for all victims, and basically it's just promoting, getting the legislature to pass a law that guarantees victims' rights in, in situations. And they wanted to come and make a presentation for the council. And so I just want to see if you all wanted to hear it or let it's not anything it. like stand your ground they got in Florida, is it? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of afraid. Like, what are, we, are they going to come and well, get picketing? You know, some of the things like... The, that the victim has a right to speak at the trial or has a right during the sentencing to, you know, to speak or uh, to seek restitution or, you know, just it covers all the rights that a victim should have. You mean, in other words, that you're not going to be sued by MGM because that they were at Mandalay Hotel and <laughs> yeah. 58 of them or whatever it was was killed and now they're suing yeah. the victims and the yeah. victim's family so that they'll take it to federal court so they can get a cherry-picked... Uh, they're trying to cover their, their self, themselves so that they can. Apparently, it's an actual constitutional amendment to our state constitution. It'll be on the ballot in November. The Marcy's? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, but they wanted our support that we support Marcy's law. They just wanted us to. Well, I'm going to make a name. suggestion. I'm sitting by a lady that came here one night and brought up the subject of <laughs> where she worked and totally changed my complexion because I thought it was. Not what it is. I admit that. I didn't have a clue what True. it was. Yeah. And the majority of us sitting on this table did not know that. Mm -hmm. So education goes a long way. And after we listen to their presentation, we may not want to support it, but right now we would be naive not to at least listen to it. Well, I'll, listen, I'll listen to any kind of presentation to make a decision. I don't know what we're presenting on, but well, I'll listen to uh, Well, just a brief Google search. It appears to be a constitutional amendment essentially given. Uh, crime victims equal constitutional rights on, um, at trial, such as if you're staying accused of a crime, you have the opportunity to cross-examine your accuser and things of that nature. It's giving the victim the opportunity to actually testify and make a, and make a victim impact statement at the trial or sentencing. It's not a very brief understanding of it. Okay. Anybody have any problems with coming? 
We'll just give permission to come yep. at the next meeting. Okay. That's all I've got. Anybody else have any? Two quick things. I, I, we've had this on the books for two years. I don't know that we've done anything. People who have not paid their taxes, I mean, is it too late to do anything on that? Uh, so we can we, we we've talk to you today, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Conversation now, we just never have attacked it. Well, we've had a couple of things uh, on the plate, but yeah, we've talked about uh, moving forward and either at least starting foreclosure process on some of these old liens that we have out there because it's not been any good to give them notifications. So well, we I guess we've talked about it long enough. Can we just go ahead and move and take action? I'm, I'm hopefully we'll got another attorney starting my office come October. Very. Let's hope we do. Let's hope we do. <laughs> so that's hopefully going to help. Her that. brother and my son, I'm hoping, he took the ball yesterday. Oh, really? so. uh, well, I would like to see us take on, and, and I want to give a quick couple of updates before we dismiss. Um, we met with uh, KU, and we're looking at, there's some electrical issues on that building. We're waiting for a response from KU uh, before, you know, and uh, Wilkerson yesterday dug a pit beside it. They were unaware there was a basement, and they want to make sure they don't trap water and force water going into that building. Uh, so they are looking at that. So hopefully we'll have some, we are seeing some action taking on down there. Did you see all the wires in that pit? I saw all the wires and all the brick bats in that pit. I don't know how in the heck they ever dug that hole. And I would like to go on record that myself and the mayor and my wife attended to a Beaver Dam Tourism Commission last night. We went over there for twofold purpose. One was to request support for the Harvest Festival and request support for wall doing some work on the wall and I am I want to thank Beaver Dam Tourism I want to say pleasantly that they have voted to support the expenses with Andy Brasher coming to the Harvest Festival this fall uh, it wasn't an exact dollar figure we projected that would be about two thousand dollars I'm not sure if that is a solid number yet or not but they are going to cover the expense on Andy Brasher $2,000 is the cost okay. of, of he and the band. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did ask about the wall. Uh, one had a question, how was that tied into tourism? We did say that uh, we were being totally honest. Lee, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you still there when I was talking? Okay. George can correct me. Um, that that's the first thing that most people see when they come to the city of Hartford, that we were wanting to put a parking lot in. We were wanting to do sidewalk work where we, we've got more businesses. We've got Harvest Festival. We've got all that. And we did not want to experience the unfortunate mishap that they have done over the last couple, three years. Right. And that uh, any assistance on that would be welcome. And that um, uh, they did not, to my knowledge, take any action on that last night other than there was discussion of saying that they've got some expenditures. they got to pay out for bans. And uh, that um, I think they're going to continue to look at that. But I want to go on the record in saying I want to thank the Beaver Dam Tourism and uh, for helping cover the expense on on uh, Andy Brasher. I think it is important that we recognize that at the Harvest Festival that they are covering that expense. Absolutely. So, other than that, I move we adjourn. Well, I've Second. got a question. Wait a minute, move, I've got a move, question. Move, 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 move. She's got something. I want to go back to the police officer. I think we have some communication issues because we give George the right to do yeah, but I need to learn to do it the right way I know but I we can say from this day forward let's do this but if you've already talked to this person oh yeah that's true I mean I think uh, He's, he was the only I mean Leroy I think we should trust your judgment in he this had several different people who are already in other words we don't have to wait 11 months while they go get certified at, at Eastern mm-hmm this guy's already certified as a, <coughs> as a policeman. Uh, he's desirous of coming over here. He showed the interest in it that nobody else showed, and I just... I have no Here's idea who thing, this is, is but I think we should support know. George's... When it comes to that, if you even if you advertise, you don't have to hire somebody that's not qualified. I mean, right. you still may end up hiring him, but I think that it's, it's better practice. Like she said, it looks more transparent on our part. Plus, it gives you the opportunity to find out, is there really somebody else out there that is better qualified? Because you never know. Or maybe somebody looking to move to the city. I'm still learning. I agree. <laughs> but, from this day forward. But if you have already spoken to him and made a job offer, mm -hmm. then just like we had 
previous have you already had a job we need to stuck, stick with that yeah. oh yes. man, that's but that, we don't we don't want to be in the situation no. we were on this other no. young i say we go i'm glad you said that six i didn't even i didn't understand that you'd already made it i just yeah. i thought it was an inquiry i didn't realize he, the put, job in, he put in an application with leroy uh, well, actually, Leroy gave it to me today, so I don't know when he put it in. Uh, but some of the other fellows have worked with him before on cases, and they, they spoke very highly of him. Josh spoke highly of him. Brent spoke highly of him. And he showed an interest in wanting to come over here. In an effort, I said, was saying to kind of give George some direction. It's just come up a couple times when there's been openings in the city and, and whether or not the council wants to fill them after George has kind of gone out and done that. Do you all want to put somewhat of a moratorium before you fill any open positions until it comes back to the council to see if there's a need? I mean, you need to probably give him some direction on that. I think there's two things. I think it depends on what I mean, I think there's two is. things. One is, is it, you know, if it's, it's if it's, uh, if we know it's a need, I mean, I think we have to, Sometimes you're in dire straits. You, you have know, to do something. You have to do what you got to do. Uh, I do think it's appropriate to, to advertise. I, I don't want to lose a potential good employee. But one thing I don't want to do is, if the mayor's already talked to somebody and offered somebody a position, I, I, we're, I'm not going to go. I don't want to. No. I don't want to betray go that. Against that. His I don't want to betray that. And, and I will say, under your all setup, I mean, that is his authority. He, he hires. And he. But I mean, you all did pass a motion several months ago too about looking at a reduction in full right. workforce and some other issues too. But you never really gave any specific direction whether or not to rehire certain positions or or what what else you want to do if you're just eliminating positions entirely. So I think that might be Is it fair to say to that if we have a line at. staff member in any of our departments that, that leaves before we fill that position to look to see if, if, if we can do something different? Otherwise, uh, he'd go ahead and fill his mayoral, mayoral responsibilities. <laughs> My only thing is this, I report right now that we've got an opening. We have to have a special call meeting or something like that, or we wait a month to yeah. fill that opening. Right. He's already going to be gone. Well, well that's, yeah. I, I think you, know? you can advertise it immediately. I mean, as soon as you know that you've got an opening, advertise it. I don't think it has to come back to the council for that but maybe you could like you said earlier take a poll and say hey is there any reason why we shouldn't go ahead and fill this position and then advertise it and hire in it I mean I just think that especially with us looking at budgets and downsizing but the thing is you're the one who told us where to downsize so you you know more about that than most of us are going to know I mean when it comes to the budget we can look at it and say can we can we do without this person? But you're the one who knows who we can do with. I mean, how many people we need to actually operate a, a department? Well, so. uh, and let me say one more thing along that line: is you, mm -hmm. the decision you made in regard to the cemetery, I think, was an excellent decision. The cemetery looks better than it's ever done, and the expenses are very, very, very much that we have a savings. Number two is is that the young man that Anthony has turned out has turned out to be a great. wonderful hire. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to second guess. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Are we required by law to advertise? We well, create a new position. We need to yeah. create like a hierarchy or change up how you're doing that. That would be an advertising spot. But that if we just have, but if you're back filling, but if we just have an opening, like we have now, he's got applications, blah, yeah. blah blah blah. I think there was a question at one particular point of whether or not we had so many on the operators, how many was listed. But I think that was more. Yeah. The naming yeah. of the position than the actual filling is how we determine right. whether. Yeah. I mean, I'm just. Uh, being a okay. penny pincher that I am, every time that we advertise, that's just more money going out at the coffers door. You know that. Yeah. And well. We, and I, I maybe blind, but I put my hope, to, my trust in the mayor that he's going to talk with either the fire department chief or the police chief or whoever that has is qualified to between the two. The of problem them, is the when you do that, you're basing your hiring just on the people who know the people you know. Right. You're not. And, you're not giving but. the opportunity to find out what what actually skilled labor is out there. You're not giving the opportunity to the public, and it looks bad to other citizens, especially whenever you're going and being like, oh, the fire chief knew them, so that, that's why they got hired. And not that that matters so much, except for, you know, we are uh, a city government, and so you don't want the citizens to be thinking that you're just hiring 
everybody's buddy. There is something And I about. agree to that, what you just said, but I hold the mayor in a level of confidence that he's not going to be that good old boy hiring system. That, that's the only thing I do want to point out. There is there is an entity in this community that's had what was called the good old boys club and the good old girls club. And I, I'm not going to, we all know who it is. And I just don't want to, I want us to be careful we don't get that. I, as I okay, said, I have full co I have, automatically. Huh? If you do hire them that way, regardless of whether you intend to do it that way, it is created automatically because the way you're doing your hiring process is based on just who you know and who, who the people that you know know. That's the only basis that you would use um, to hire that person. So it creates it automatically. It is, it's a good old boy system even if you're not intending it to be. Well, I mean, I so, have other applications on file in there that, but um, they're not viable candidates. A woman who's never been a placement doesn't have any training whatsoever. Yeah, you know, put in her application. But you're not going to have random people showing up and putting in an application for a job that isn't advertised. They might have put in an application because they heard that one may be coming open, but I'm just saying. I, I will say this. I think I, I get what both of you are saying, and I would. Maybe, maybe the charge to George would be is if he's identified somebody who he thinks would be an excellent candidate, knowing the fact that he is here, he works with the departments, he works with the employees, he knows what the needs are, you know, give him some leeway to go ahead and do that. If he doesn't automatically have someone in mind that he's identified that would be, you know, encourage you to advertise and try and find. Yeah, I think you're safe for advertising. I, I, you already have the right. To hire if you want to. I mean, obviously that's our, already I'll your. Keep happy, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you will never be able to keep everybody on here happy, George. Handle it. Move with her. Second. All in favor? Yes. All right. Thank Bye. You.